Good morning guys, let me introduce Stephen and we're going to have a look and see what Stephen's done to this FJ Cruiser here. Driving in water this deep, I would never do that. I changed the exhaust system on this up. What drew it to us was the fact that they're Aussie built. They had a mate of mine who were the place where they had to cut these pieces in half to get this. I've got 160 watts of solar up. And it's just under its own weight, it chops down. I actually made all this myself. I lift this lid up here and set it so it's real low down. When I go fishing and I put my fishing gear in the back, it always seems to tangle up. Hello Steve. How you going Phil? Thank you for uh, being on my YouTube channel. I've got a YouTube channel as well. It's only a small channel but it's called FJ Camping and Touring. And I like doing videos like Phil on reviews and I like doing a bit of touring videos and things like that. And just maybe helping people out with some of the products I've got and show them how they work. So to do make an awesome vehicle, particularly for off-roading, touring, camping, and that's what we're into. Steve's a bit of a handyman, so he's done a lot of modifications himself on this. Can you tell me about the year, the model? It's a 2014, I bought it late in uh, 2015. Yeah. Or early in 2015 actually. So it's a 4 litre V6, they only come out with a petrol, uh, for some reason uh, they were originally made for the American market uh, in about 2010 and the American market they were all into their Jeeps and Wranglers and, and things like that and I think um, Toyota wanted to bring out a competitor for uh, Jeep because there's a little saying J community what uh, FJ is short for and you might be able to work that out if you put the two words together. So if you know what a Jeep is, and there's another word that uh, Australian slang that goes with it, and that's what <laughs> FJ stands for. It doesn't really, it stands for the model number and all that, but it's actually a re it's meant to be a throwback to the old FJ40, and that's what the styling of the vehicle's about. They've got all the original sort of grill, the headlights, and even with the white roof and some of the styling on the vehicle, it's sort of to represent a throwback to that Okay. You know, FJ40 that was originally a petrol engine. Okay. That's what they come out with. All so right. they put a petrol engine in it. There's a lot of conjecture about that because you know diesels are meant to be uh, better low down with torque mm. and things like that when four-wheel driving. But these are quite a capable vehicle. Yet a lot of people have done many tracks in Australia. Have been to the Cape. They've been across the Simpson Desert. Mm. They'll go anywhere most four-wheel drives will go. They're, yeah. they're they're pretty good off-road and. Most of the running gear in this um, car is based off a of Toyota Prado. Mm. Um, nearly all the parts for it are oh, Prado. Okay. I wasn't so, aware of that. So all the, all, the run, all the running gear, all the parts, everything are Prado. Let's have a look at this, what you got out the front here. First thing I did when I upgraded the vehicle yeah. is I changed the suspension yep. and tyres because yeah. being new to four wheel driving as myself, because my original car before this I had a Subaru XV. Mm -hmm. It's only a little, uh, it was an all-wheel drive, it wasn't a four-wheel drive mm -hmm. and I have never done a lot of four-wheel driving but I wanted something, as we started going out camping, I wanted something a little bit more off-road and something that could take us to places mm -hmm. that were a little bit more inaccessible. Mm -hmm. So that's why we went with this. Yeah. And um, the first things I read, you know, what should you do when you get a four-wheel drive? What's the most important thing you should do? And everyone said, suspension and mm. tyres. Mm. So that's what I did. I put a two inch lift in it because that was the only legal thing you can do in. And this is a TJM lift I put in it. And I went and seen TJM mm. and they asked me a lot of questions about what I was doing, what I was towing, what I was going to put due to the car in the future. Mm. Because they built the suspension about not what I was doing now, but what I was doing two years down the track. Yeah. You know, was I going to put a draw kit in the back? Was I going to put a fridge in the back? Yeah. Was I going to tow a camper? Was I towing a caravan? What was I doing? Yeah. Because they balanced the suspension out for the two, for, for, the for two. what you're touring yeah. you're going to do. And that's what I told them. The suspension in the back is slightly heavier and the suspension in the front because I'm towing and because I've put a fridge in there, I put drawers in there. So when it is empty and you're not towing, it is a little bit heavier in the back end. But yeah, I, I, I must be, I've, I've gone for a ride in this uh, FJ a few times now. And I've found that it's got a really smooth ride. It is smooth. Even even with no hardly any weight, no gear, no, no, to, like no tire in the trailer or anything, 
it's actually quite smooth because we went for a bit of a ride up this bumpy road just up here the other day and I was quite amazed at just how smooth this is and that that's exactly I mean that's put it down to the TJM suspension as well but that's also the design of the car as well it's IFS in the front Okay. Uh, and it's got a diff in the back, so okay. and it has got rear diff lockers in it. That's a factory rear diff lockers as well. So, IFS, that's independent front suspension, and yeah. it's got the diff at the, the diff back. At the back, so and it has got diff lockers. That's in the usually back. a good combination too, guys. Particularly if you're doing some really heavy duty four-wheel driving, now those diffs at the rear end are usually a lot more tougher and can sustain a lot more punishment than over the your full independent suspension. So uh, what I, what that's what I've found over the years after owning quite a few different types of four drives myself. So the your next, ball bar. Yeah, that, that was the Tell next. Tell me about your ball bar. What what brand is this? Who, so, who makes this? So this is from Outback Central and it's an X Rocks bar. I got this okay. fitted at um, uh, Redcliffe in uh, Queensland. Yep. Um, Outback Accessories put it on for me. And they actually fitted this on a rear bar as well, but we'll have a look at that when we go down there. Yeah. I looked at all sorts of bars and things. I looked at ARB, I looked at many different ones. And this one kept coming back to me because I've seen so many photos on the forums and things with other bars on them. And to be honest with you, this one appealed to me more for like mm. and more for the approach angle under the wheel here. Like you can see the tire there, yeah. it's got nothing around it oh true look at that so yeah. if you're off-roading if you're off-roading like a lot of the arbs and that they'll have this piece come right out here mm. and around here yeah and it limits your off-road and this is a little bit lighter mm. but it doesn't compromise on strength it's also certified with a with the airbags and everything good they're designed good. for the car good. and these little wings on here you can see they're all bolted all through here mm. So if you happen to hit a roux or you know hit something or whatever and you bend this, mm. these are replaceable. Oh really? So you can just replace this section? Yeah. So how, you... how cool an idea is that? I can see all the bolts in there and they look, there's quite a few here. I mean there's quite a number of bolts here so it's certainly very strong and additional to here. But what an excellent idea is that? I've never seen that design. Yeah, so and then why I got this fitted I thought I may as well get a winch put on, so I had a VRS winch put in it. Um, it's not remote control, but you can buy one for it. I just have the little controller that I plug in the top there, and you've got your clutch and everything down in here, okay. which you can access. And how many pounds is your winch? I think it was 18... 1800 I 1800 think. okay yeah. and it's a VRS I've, I've, I've never heard of the VRS so. I think they're a pretty like they are a pretty good um, brand of wind I run it occasionally like if I'm not you like most people that have winches yeah unless you're doing really extreme off road driving you're not using it that much yeah but I make every three months or so I'll just pull the uh, spool it out you know wind it back in just make sure everything's moving sure it's a good idea yeah yeah i see you've got one of these new, new, new ultra hooks here factor 55s yeah, I, yeah. I bought that it again it only had a big um, sort of galvanized hook on the end of it yeah and i had to have it stuck all the way down there yeah. and i had the rope hanging down here and it was in the sun all the time and i was really worried about it you know getting damaged from the weather perish and so so and it's got rope on it's not a chain yeah so it's I actually a, synth rope. a synthetic yeah. rope synthetic rope with this one you can pull them right up to your plate there yeah and, and it's a bit flush with the front of the thing i'm always worried about someone flogging it but mm -hmm. i mean it's one of those things you you just well you've got to that won't with. be easy to take off guys because that's a decent rope on there and it, it doesn't look like it's very accessible as well so you've got some accessories on this ball bar I can see. Yeah, so I'll put a CB in it. G, G, GHM is it? Or GHM CB? Okay. GHM I think no, they are? GME. Or GME, or GME, that's it. That's the Australian manufactured yeah, one. I should read there, GME. Yeah, that's why I got there. I just read it. <laughs> <laughs> that's so, what I got guys. I got the GME as well. Yeah, and it's quite good. And yeah. the reason we put all this on, because we actually did a three month trip all through Central Australia. Yeah. We drove to Cameron's Corner, we went to Ayers Rock, we went to uh, Longreach, we did a lot of um, off-road driving and a lot of bush tracks. So I put the CB in just so that we would have sort of some communication. Oh excellent, yeah I from... think that it's important to have the CB. I know while we're driving along, we're travelling, we're always 
chatting on this CB, it's, it's mighty handy. So you got some lights here, tell me about these lights. So there, I've got those from Super Cheap actually. Okay. They're good. They're called Big Red. Yeah, I noticed that, Big Red. Appropriate um, when you go over Big Red on the Simpson they're, Desert. I can forget what lumens they are, but they're, they're bloody bright. Yeah. I've got one on top there and I've got a smaller one underneath. Yeah. And I did wire those up myself, they were pretty easy. They just have a little nice piece that you put in your headlight. Okay. And um, I just had to run a switch into the console. Yeah. And it's hooked up to my high beam. So I can turn them off manually, which is legally you have to. Yeah. You have to have a different switch on them. Yeah. But when I put my lights on high beam, these comes on because these lights in this FJ are absolutely horrible. They, that's one of the things that everyone either changes. Someone did send me a link the other day to an LED that I can put in there. So I'm going to look that up and see if I can get them. All right, excellent. And I see you've got the blue bonnet protector here. Yeah, I just had that put on when I bought the car. So uh, talk, talk about bonnet. I see something different here. This was originally the same colour as the bonnet, but my car spends most of its life out in the sun because, and it can be brutal on paintwork. Mm, okay. um, and, and this piece here is actually like a plastic. The little piece above the roof, above the windscreen, that's plastic. At least it won't rust. No, it won't rust. I've got a tin of that um, Raptor coat. But I actually pulled it off, sanded it all back, primed it, and I rapticated it myself. Steve mentioned something about the suspension. Up under here, these are the TJM suspensions. So I've got heavy duty springs, and I've also got the TJM shocks, which are oil filled. They've been performing really well. They've been on this car for over six years. They're still not showing any signs of wear, so they're going great. And also over here, I fitted uh, these road safe four wheel drive recovery points, because you don't want to be using the tie down points that come from the factory. You see a lot of people think that they are for towing and pulling yourself out with snatch straps and you're more likely to hurt yourself if you something like that because they'll just break. They're just used in the factory when they take them off the ships to tie them down in the boat. So always make sure you put on good recovery points. These were on here when I bought it. They have got a good rating, but I'd rather use these if I was doing a recovery because they're mounted straight to the chassis. So underneath the car, I haven't put any bash plates as as such. It's still got all the factory. It may be something I'll do in the future, but I'm trying to keep the weight down in the vehicle. But X-Rocks do have a really good bash plate that they fit as part of their bar package that protects all your radiator and everything down there. It's you know, really, it looks like about two mil steel. So I'm pretty confident that'll stop anything breaking the radiator down there. So I noticed Steve, you got some nice little chunky tires here. Can you tell me about those? I had a mate who had a good friend at uh, Bob James, and I bought these. These tires have done 75,000 kilometers, That's and they're, I'd never heard of them before. They're a Dick Kopernick. I haven't heard of them as well. What and they're, they? and they're, they're, they're called Fun Country. And fun, they're, fun Country, guys, they're called Fun Country, if you ever heard of them. And they're LT265 slash 70R17s. So that's not a standard size for the FJ? They might be a little bit wider in the bit wider. in the width. Height there is exactly the same. And you can, as you can see, they've still got plenty of tread on them, yeah, haven't guys, they? They've still got a lot of tread on these. It's, it's almost, um, I mean, I've seen new tyres that got less tread than this. <laughs> they just so. don't seem to wear out. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good thing. And you've tested them too. I mean, Steve's been towing, he's been sand driving with these. He's taken this to Kinkoonan. And the section at the Barham Coast National Park, for those who've been there, you know how soft that can get. With the wheels, when this Jay came out, when I bought it, these are the original rims, but they were just polished aluminium. I painted them myself. Wow, they look like they're from the factory. Yeah. Well, so they've got dust on them, but I put the dust off and they look like they're just from the factory. They've been wearing really well. They haven't, I've got one little chip there, but I think I actually did that when I put it on. Yeah. And I think that's the only chip and it's on this wheel. <laughs> I actually bought a special primer and a special wheel paint. And I, I got on YouTube and watched a heap of videos. And I got, out in the back, I got out in the backyard there one day, took all the wheels off individually. individually. <laughs> I sanded them all back with wet and dry sandpaper. I painted them and let them bake in the sun and put them back on and they've been great. Ever. And I think the black looks better with the vehicle. You've got a snorkel on here. If you want to tell me about that, did you install this yourself or no, where's yeah. it from? It's actually from TJM. And the reason I got this one is because it's got a very low profile and it's nice and thin. So if you're four wheel driving, you're always worrying about sticks and things, uh, sides of banks. 
bashing on the side of your car and it sort of fits in flat, nearly flush with all the guards and everything. And the other thing, they had the factory blinker that was still being able to use here. That blinker was on the guard and they just relocate it back out to here. Now the main reason I put this on, it wasn't actually for water crossings. That was in mind, but I'm not, I'm not planning to drive it in water this deep. I would never do that. Yeah. Um, it's not my type of four-wheel drive and I'm no. not really interested. The reason I put it in was more for better airflow into the motor because it's a petrol engine. Okay. I've heard that you know the better airflow you can get into the engine, the better they run and the more fuel efficient they are. So that was my original why I thought I would put this snorkel onto this car. Your engine here on the FJ Cruiser. So have you done anything to this? Is this all stock standard? What have you done? Any accessories? Anything major updates on this? Well I have. I put a transmission cooler which is just over in front of the radiator there where you are there now. So you might be able to see it just down, down just below the horn there. Yep. Behind the horn. Yes I can see it. Yeah so the reason I put that in because I do do a lot of towing I thought it would be a good idea being an auto transmission to have a uh, transmission cooler in there. So I had that fitted down at the same guys that did the uh, the bull bar. They actually, they used to rent these FJ cruisers out for Fraser Island. They had about five of them and they rented them out and they'd had them for over 10 years and they just rented them out to customers and they had rooftop tents on them and to send them over to Fraser Island and that was their main business. And uh, they know everything there is to know about an FJ Cruiser, so that's why I used to take it there. Another thing I did have in here, um, I don't know whether you can pick it up, I'll just point to it down here. I had a dual battery put in here, so my main battery's over there on the other side. And I had a 70, that's all I could fit in there was a 75 amp hour battery because to get a bigger battery in, I would have had to move the airbox across. I already had that fitted. I would have had to move the power steering fluid everything just to fit a bigger battery in here and that was the only place I could put it. So I went for a 75 amp hour, I had a little tray put in. I had that in there for a, oh, a year and a half or whatever and or nearly two years actually and the battery started to die on me and that's when I made the decision to go to a different battery system in the back. The only other thing that I had to do recently in my cover as well, I changed the exhaust system on this only about two weeks ago and I took the original steel exhaust off it and I went to Bow Desert Exhaust in Bow Desert and had them put a custom performance exhaust system in it. Oh. It, it was fairly expensive, like it was over $3,000 mm. but it's full stainless steel, it's uh, 401 stainless steel. When you're going up a hill and you're towing you put your foot down and you'll hear the exhaust get that little bit of a drone in it Yeah. Um, but it's not overly noisy or anything, you notice it a little bit more inside the car it's starting to quieten down a little bit now as the exhaust burns in a little bit okay. more. As for uh, power and fuel economy, they did say to me anywhere between 8 and 11%. All right. And to be honest with you, I think it has helped. I have noticed the fuel's been a little bit better. Because with this car, it's got a dual fuel tank in it. It's got 178 litres of fuel that it can carry. Normally when I'm not towing or anything, that'll get me about 1,200 k's. Oh, sweet. That's um, touring. Yeah. Um, if you're driving around town, obviously it's a bit more because you're stopping and starting and putting your foot down and gears more and all that sort of thing. When I'm towing, it's anywhere, depending on the road conditions and what you're driving, normally about 16.8 is about where it'll sit litres per 100 uh, k's. When you're towing. When I'm towing. If I'm off-road in you know, heavy sand or something like that, you'll probably find it'll go up to 20. Yeah. Talk about towing. Dot trailer. And it was made by Drifter down in Gloucester. So it's Australian made, it's using Australian steel, it's built to last. Unfortunately guys, they don't make them anymore, but they did make just over 400 of them. So if you're interested in a trailer like this, you can look around the marketplace and often you'll see a second hand one pop up. Yeah, they do come up, not very often because when we get them, we like to keep them. And I love this trailer, like it's fantastic. The what drew it to us was the fact that they're Aussie built. The shirt I'm wearing now, Crazy Dog Canvas, he actually built all that rooftop tent. Oh. Uh, it was built here in Maryborough. The trailer itself I think was built in Gloucester in New South Wales by Drifter. A lot of the awnings and that on it are all built in Queensland. So it's a fantastic trailer and the other reason why I got it is the towing capacity on the FJ is only about 2,200 kilos. Mm -hmm. So it hasn't got a big towing capacity. 
and this trailer only weighs 1200 kilos got a capacity of 450 so it puts it up to 1750 mass that I can tow so it's way under my towing cut so guys let's move along the side of the FJ the Toyota FJ so I've noticed we've got some rock slides here so you want to tell me about those well they were another thing I sort of put on after I got it I did sort of think you know if I am off if I am four-wheel driving and off-road there's a lot of stuff down here that can get damaged and yeah. I thought I'll get these and put on there because they go way up underneath the bottom of the car there and if you do get hung up on a rock or on a ledge or something like that you're going to know that your door panel is going to be safe because it's a lot easier to fix these than what it is to fix this tell me about that one I made those I had a mate of mine with a plasma cutter he cut out the little end pieces here and I just got this bit of steel bent up at an engineering works and I just got me welder out welded them up and they've got one bolt in each end and the way they, they fit in between the two pipes, there's a pipe at the back there the same size as this one, and that stops it from moving around because they just hit up against it. And the reason I put them in is because I'm only short, got a short wheelbase between here and here. <laughs> I'm not very tall. And when I put the two inch lift in it, I was sort of opening up the door and I was grabbing hold of the door frame and trying to climb up there. And I was put my foot up on the ledge there, grab hold of the stair wheel, I'm in the car. Oh, been wonderful. Look how easy that is, so yeah. Brilliant idea. Now they do get in the road if you are off road. Yeah. And the reason I just carry two shifters in the car in my toolkit. So you can easily remove them. Takes five minutes. Take and them you've, off. you've got a bit of space there still though. I mean it's not going to be too many places where you really, unless you're really severely, you know, doing some rock hopping or something so on, and you're in some real extreme ter terrains, you wouldn't need to have a wire. Because I can't imagine you. The only time Too many I ever, times you would ever have to take that off. No, the only time I ever noticed they hit anything was when we went to Concuna. Yeah. And you know some of the ruts in the real heavy sand? I could hear the sand yeah. rubbing against that. Bumping against that, but it was oh, no yeah. it's no issue, like it wasn't gonna hurt. Oh it. no, you just level it out for it. Yeah, the just next time it, out. it goes. Yeah. It's perfect. No wonder. Is that why it was a lot smoother when I came back? Yeah, yeah it was. <laughs> <laughs> I did put these stickers on here too, they were Oh, so they're not standard. No, I bought those online. I wanted to break the paintwork up a little bit and I liked them, so I, I did that myself. I noticed you got another sticker here. Thumbs up. Yeah, kick, <laughs> kick ass. Kick ass outback proof gear, guys. You guys out of Australian Direct. Yeah, good on you, Clayton. Good stuff here, yeah, Clayton. I'm wearing, I'm, I'm wearing their gear now. <laughs> yeah, and guys, one more. Australian, Australian camping and four wheel driving. That's Rob, so check his channel out as, as well, it's similar to our channel. Now, I can see an awesome awning here, it looks very similar to my awning. Yeah, I think you're doing a couple of videos on it, yes. aren't you Phil? I just so happened to have done a video on this one yesterday, so Stephen's got a 30 second wing awning here, which is very similar to the ostrich wing, except it's a lot cheaper. It's about a, it's about eight hundred dollars cheaper. Yes. So, guys, I didn't pay that much for mine. Of course, I got a good deal with it. If you want to have a look at this, go back a couple of days, maybe a cut to a week, back on my YouTube channel, and I've got a review video on this awning compared against my ostrich wing awning. And one other thing, Phil, which we didn't cover on your video, with this awning, you probably can't see them up under here, but I've got. The fittings I put it on with are, are called a Raxbrax fitting and they're an Australian company and what that gives me the capability of doing is there's two pins up under there I just pull the pins out I can lift the awning off and put it up in the shed so if I don't want this awning on here I can quickly take it off the car so how long would that take you to do it yeah. only takes a few minutes but so I'll a few minutes you can have that so you don't have to rig around with bolts and nuts no. and it's just um, a ladder and so on so it just clips on there there's two up under there you can see there's a little key lock and it's locked on there so uh, it's locked on there so no one can just come here and just boop, boop, yeah. and take it away i haven't i forgot to bring the key with me otherwise i'd take it off and show you <laughs> but you just undo the lock there's two pins in there you pull the pins out and then the awning just lifts out and you can take it off and the reason they do that is you can buy extra fittings so you want to hang that awning up in your shed at home you put the fitting the same sort of male uh, female fitting up on the roof of your shed yeah. And then you just hang it on, put the pins back in and your awning yeah. can sit in the shed. Actually guys, if you go to Steve, 
channel, FJ Camping and Touring. Camping and Touring. It's got videos up just showing that very system and how it works. So make sure you go to his channel. If you're interested in these quick release brackets, check out his channel. It's got awesome review on them. Yeah, they're great. And they're an Aussie company, so you can't go wrong. Exactly. You support an Aussie too, hey? How good is that? Is this standard? This no. Rib? No, the rear bar finished basically where these were. They actually cut these pieces in half to fit this. This is a steel rear bar. Um, it's, a, it's the X-Rox one, okay. same, same company. I had to put on the same time as the front one. This place did it. You can see these little plastic mounts. The bar just went across there basically. And it was only uh, like a little plastic rear bar. The other piece is up under there. So the good thing I like about this, it gives you so much protection around the rear of your car. And all the tow bar and everything still fits on there perfectly. And the good thing I really love about it, I'll put my drink down here, is when I open up the door, Say I've got stuff on the roof that I want to get, I just grab a hold of the side of the car, put my foot up under there, and I can climb up here, grab stuff if I've got it up on the roof. It's awesome. A, it's a great platform. You can see how solid the suspension is in the back of this thing. And, and it's this right at the perfect height as well, guys. I can see a roof rack. This is the original roof rack underneath here, underneath all this that they come with the FJ. I've never changed it. I may one day, but the reason I've left it like this is because I've got 160 watts of solar up here and it's all flush with under the roof. I bought this little basket that the solar panels are sitting in at um, BCF. I think it was only a hundred bucks and it fitted perfectly in between the rails of the roof rack. So it's a real low profile. It doesn't catch much wind and it just keeps all my panels nice and flat. I can still put stuff on top of these bars up here. I do put a couple of kayaks up here at times but you have to take them off if you park so that the sun can still get to the solar panels. I notice you got some lights up here. Yeah, so I had one of the electrical places in Kingaroy, the people that done the battery system for me. I try to go to the same place all the time, you know their work. They actually fit, did all the wiring. I don't know whether you can pick it up in the corner up here, I'll put my finger up there. They actually put two fittings down through the roof of the car. I have got some cables running down near the back door there, but originally I had these fittings put down through the roof of the car, one's for the solar, to go inside to the battery system and the other ones for these lights so they're at night if you've got to reverse up to the trailer and you need a bit more light because they're real low voltage leds so they put out a terrific wide light at the back here so if you're pulling up and you need some light to uh, hook up a trailer and hook the trailer set the camper up you've got it at the back you've there got plenty of rights then the little uh, camera up the back there oh, that's that, a, yeah that, that's actually a rear reversing rear camera, camera yeah um because the one that was on the car comes behind the wheel here. Yes. But I put this wheel cover on. It still works, it's hooked up to the revision mirror, but I couldn't use it because I put the wheel cover on there and I wanted to keep the wheel cover on there. So I put in my own reversing camera and it's up there and it gives me a terrific shot of the rear of the car. And it also doubles, it hooks up. I've got another one on the trailer. So when I'm driving, I can see what's behind me, overtaking me or whatever. Yeah, that's a good idea. I've got similar to my vehicle, I've got a a uh, camera up high and you if you look closely you'll see it's mounted just under my rooftop tent i have got another camera too on the back and you probably can't see it with that camera angle but it's just above the table and it's just above the table and it's pointing directly at the top of the table the reason i put that there is because it stops a lot of arguments when you're back in the car after the trailer <laughs> and uh, the last thing you want is arguments that's a da35 hitch from cruise master they're terrific like they're australian aren't they yeah they they're just so easy so you can see the your trailer tow ball as it backs up and you're pretty much right on the spot every time you could do this on your own you wouldn't need a second person and then you perfect right there come out and just drop it down how brilliant is that it's a really good idea let's get into this good stuff that he's got at the back here they sold Steve that uh, MSA drop down fridge slide as you've seen in my channel I've got a different system there now so I didn't require this anymore so I sold this to Steve and I'm gonna let Steve talk about the rest here yeah so originally these um, set of drawers in here weren't in here now I made these myself um, I looked at buying a set of drawers but at the time I just purchased the car and I didn't have the funds and I have got a cabinet maker background I had my own furniture business and I used to build furniture and stuff like that mm. so I thought 
I'll build these set of drawers myself. They've been great, like they've been in here the whole time I've had the car virtually. Again, one of the first things I built. I made awesome. it out I made it out of about 12 mil craft wood. I bought a sheet of craft wood and I sprayed it all black and I've just glued carpet over the front. Now, they've just got roller runners on the side. They're a little bit worn now, they're starting to wear out. I'll probably change them around soon. Still, they're still very smooth, eh? But I've they're done dirt. Too bad. I've done dirt roads to Cameron's Corner, I've done everywhere. Um, I have broke one of the wheels off that one, I had to replace it once. But they've lasted really well. I did store all our cooking stuff and all our jacks and you know anything we might need when we're camping in here once. Yep. But I've changed it around for a reason and I can show you that in a minute. We now just put all our clothes in here. That's all we put in here. I got my clothes on this side, Annie's got her clothes on that side. You got the bigger drawer. If you had a choice, which side would you take? <laughs> so you got a position here for your IGT3 table. So that's awesome. You got the pulse that goes through there and uh, reinforced with the metal bar here. So the fridge works as normal. Um, just up beside the fridge there, we might be able to show you in a second. I've got my single ARB compressor. We've got a lot of few bees around here. Yeah, native bees are loving us here. Yeah, it works really good. That's a new uh, Ingle fridge. And that's a combi, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's a fridge freezer yes, combo. Yes, that's similar to the uh, first fridge that I got before I won the, the Kick-Ass 75 litre dual zone fridge freezer. Very nice, I love the colour on these. Beautiful fridge. Fits perfectly in the MSA. For those who don't have not seen the MSA drop down slide, I'll get Steve to show you how it works. There's a lot of you guys in overseas have probably never seen this before. Yeah, so it's got a lock there. You can lock it off so that if you are four wheel drive and it doesn't move. Uh, so you just unlock it. You just pull this catch down, pull it out. Make sure you pull the handle down and you just take the weight and let it drop down. It's so easy, I mean, check this out. I can just do this with one hand. It's very little effort. There are these gas tracks on here that supports the weight. It's, as you can see, it's on roller bearings. So again, you pull it out, pull that strip out, feed it out, and it's just under its own weight, it drops down. And then your fridge is accessible, it's down low. It's not sitting right up here. So, absolutely awesome setup. So we'll put this back in and again I'll show you how easy that is to do. Very smooth action process and the handles just lock in place like so. And you can lock it as well and they come with the keys here. When I built these drawers I built my own fridge slide but it only slid out to here. It had the same mechanisms and all that as these type of catches, but it only slid out to here, but the fridge was this high. So you were trying to reach up into the fridge all the time and you couldn't see what was in there. If you've seen my recent videos, that's the exact issue that I had, hence why I've done a lot of changes that I have done to my vehicle. Now I've got my fridge down a lot lower and it is brilliant. It is so much easier. So I can't tell you, I mean look how high, look at me, where I am, look how high that is. I've also probably struggled to reach stuff inside. So the, these fridge slides are awesome for this situation where you've got the jaws on the bottom. Now, I see you've got nice good storage area here and you the native bees are having a good time here. <laughs> I remember seeing on your one of your posts that you've got this barrier here that you made yourself. Yeah, I've got a video on that on my YouTube channel, so if anyone wants to really see how I made it, but it's basically just some garden fencing and some aluminium tubing and blocks from Bunnings. So I've just sort of cut it all out, riveted it all up, spray painted it black, and I made it exact size that fits in there. So I well, need this heavy water and stuff that I put in there, because we had our little dog, and she used to ride in front of it there. Mm. And I was always really worried that if I had to hit the anchors that everything in the back would, would fly in and fly hit forward and hit us. So, so that's, that just makes it a lot more safer. Anything more you want to know about this section here, go to Steve's channel. Um, we're just inside the car now and we may as well go through what we've got in here. Up here is my electrical switchboard that I, I actually made all this myself. I wired all this up, but I got electrical guys when they put the battery system in, which is over there, we'll show you in a minute. 
um, but they checked all the wiring for me, made sure all the right cables, right sizes, all that sort of thing, and uh, they gave it the seal of approval. So what I've got on here, I've got a 50 amp fuse here that runs straight from the battery. So if anything goes wrong, this will go first. So that's a 50 amp one, all the wiring, and that's right that you can see all the heavy wiring and that that's running up to it here, through this cord here. That runs down through the back here. Then I've got a iTech World battery monitor. Gives me my amperages, my voltage, my percentage of my batteries and everything. I can just toggle through it all. And up here, I've got a fuse panel, because in the corner there, if it shines down there, that's my ARB single compressor. Now it's wired directly to the battery, not to this and it's got its own fuse running on that as well so if something goes wrong it'll fuse out you need to have them wired directly to the battery but all my other accessories like my USBs, my cigarette lighters, fridge my fridge is hardwired to this as well I've got a fuse in here and I've also got a fuse on the fridge so it's double fused so if there's any problem hopefully that'll eliminate it and then also you know anything else that I may need I can wire in there I've got plenty of ports there if I want to run more stuff to my battery so I noticed something, Steve. What's that little silver thing right there? That's um, actually for my travel buddy oven. That's a step-up converter. So what I've got there, I've got it wired there straight to my fuse panel up in here. And that power outage, or power in to that, it's, um, you can see there it's got a little uh, power in sign. So that goes into this step-up converter. Then it runs out to here. And this red core here is the out. So that's my cord to my travel buddy oven. So where is your travel buddy oven? Where have you got it hidden and down here? A lot of people put them in the back, but I had no room left, so it's behind my seat. Ah, oh, so it's just right in front of you there. Yeah, it smells good when you're driving along oh. and you've got something cooking in there. There it is there, guys, what Steve was talking about. He's actually located his little travel buddy behind the, the driver's seat. Fire extinguisher. Kick-ass. Yep, kick-ass torch. Kick-ass LED torch, I've got three of them. So what I might do while you're over that side, I might just show you my battery because I made a little cover that's easily removable. So if I need to get to it in a hurry, I've got my fire extinguisher there. So just on the off chance, if you do have a fire or something like that, I've got a electrical fire extinguisher there. I can quickly just whip this cover off over here. And there's my iTech World battery. Now it's got, it's got all styrofoam around it for stop it from moving around. There's my positive and negative terminals there. So as you can see, there's only one earth lead running to it because it runs to a shunt that's down behind this board here. So all the main wiring harnesses, they're all hidden behind the box here. And that's me positive there with all the positive wires running to it. I built all this myself. I took the rear seats out of the car because there's only my wife and myself. And I didn't need the back seats. So I made all this drawer system up. I can lift this lid up here and in there, you can see I've got all my gear stored. Jump starter kit, I've got a larger jack in there. That was one thing I didn't point out. Since I put the two inch lift in, I had to buy a bigger jack because the, uh, the factory jack's not big enough to jack the car up off the ground high enough anymore. So you have to get a bigger jack. That's one thing that a lot of people don't think about. We actually had a guy come in here the other day with a camper trailer, with a caravan and car. He couldn't get the wheel nuts off his car because he changed the alloy wheels over and they put a different size wheel nut on the car. So he had to call RECQ just to get one wheel changed. You got a bit of a net in here. Yeah, that's for our hats and that we throw them up there when we're driving along. <laughs> awesome. Every, everyone always asks me, where did I get this? We were actually in Taree when I went into a $2 shop and they had a bargain bin. And I, I forget what the name of it was, what it was used for. It was just a, like a cargo net, but it fitted perfectly inside the car here. And we just throw all our hats up here just good and light keeps them out of the road throw the cuba up there and unless you know it's not going to get crushed let's have a look and see what you've got in your dashboard here so have you made any modifications here any accessories what yeah. have you changed here well like there's the gme cb it's just hanging up on there it's hidden actually up behind the back of the dashboard there so you don't have the unit it's just a hands unit, so all your buttons and your speaker and everything's in that, which is really good. And it just hangs up there. And when I'm driving along, I've got my hands on the steering wheel, I can just press the button there if I'm talking to someone. And you don't, you're not, you know, taking your eyes off the road, so that's why I keep it up there. Over on the far side here, I have got another battery monitor here. It gives me volts and of the batteries just so I can keep an eye on it. That's the little screen for the rear reversing camera. And this one up here is an iDrive. 
That's a uh, throttle controller. That was one of the best sort of investments I ever bought and put on the car. It just smooths out the uh, revving in between gears when you put your foot down. So you can set it to all different types of settings. You can set it for, so it's just on an automatic mode so it does its own thing, or you can set it on a manual mode so that you can put in your own performance. So say you're off-road driving, and when, you, you know, when you're stuck in a rut or a hole or in a bit of sand, if you put your foot down hard on the accelerator, the wheel starts spinning and bog you. You can set it so it's real low down so that it'll just spin the wheels real slightly and give you more torque and get out of a bog hole. So I can see some accessories here for your videoing. So when you video as you're driving along, and you've got these cool DJI quick connectors here. I can see. Well, they're not actually DJI. These are actually made by a company in America called Snap Mount. Oh, there you go, Snap Mount. There so you go, guys. They're actually a magnetic fitting, and you can, they're the, probably one of the best mounting systems I've ever had because you actually have this plate here, which is your base plate, and then on your camera you have a corresponding one with a, with a sort of opposite magnetic clip, and all you can do is just clip your camera up there have it sitting up there take your shot and say you see something out there you want to grab a pole you just pull the camera off clip it on the other one and away you go that's why they're called a snap mount they're so quick and easy you don't have to undo any screws or move any mounting points or anything like that so i noticed that i didn't pick up before on the side of the vehicle is you've got something here called selfie yeah i forgot all about that that's actually my selfie go that's my mobile phone booster so when we're somewhere where we can just get just enough signal maybe, I have a self I go in the car. I can show you the aerial on the back. Steve's got another external antenna outside. And maybe if Steve can mention what that does and what, briefly what the self I go is. Yeah, so I'll just point this out first. So down here at my leg here, you might see a little uh, mount here. This was where I actually had this aerial up here mounted originally. So you got a bracket here, you just pull a pin. Yes and you can put the aerial up there and it locks yeah. in place. So for you guys overseas, and even for some in Australia don't know what a Selfie Go is, a Selfie Go is a device that you can put in your car, mount in your car, as you see it's got the internal antenna, it's got the external antenna, and what it does is it boosts your mobile signal. So say you're in an area that's got what, One two, bar. two or three bars of 3G, then roughly it will increase that signal till it's well to 4G, wouldn't it? It can, 4G. it can go anywhere from like I've had it go anywhere from like two or three bars of 3G to three or four bars of 4G, just depending on where you are. If you're down in a gully or something like that, yeah. but if you're close, as long as you get some sort of signal, mm. it will boost. It will boost your signal. It's very popular here in Australia. I see something interesting up here. Something from a company called. Crazy Dog, Steve's actually wearing one of their shirts. Crazy Dog Canvas, which are based in Maribara in Queensland, not too far where we are camping right now. When we were coming on holidays, I was actually talking to Jason from Crazy Dog Canvas and I was getting some stuff made off him. And I was telling him, he asked me, was I coming up here doing a bit of fishing? And I said, yeah. So when I got to his factory, he'd actually made this. It's a new product he's got out. I did see it ages ago when he was testing it on Mr. Buckaroonie's channel. But he made one up for me and I've mounted it to the roof of my car. And what it is, it's a fishing rod holder. And it, it to the average person, it might just look like a awning bag or a shower bag or something, you know, like one of those collapsible shower tent bags. But it's actually a fishing rod bag. And now it's, it's held to the roof rack by some sail track and also there's some little clips at the back here which hold it to the roof and it stops it from flapping around. You can see there, I'm pulling on it, it's hardly moving. So another good thing too is, you can unzip it. Now you, it's got two zips on it, so you can put a padlock through these, just for security. That's a good idea, yeah. Yeah, so it's got another zip on the front here. Just put a little padlock between it and no one can get into it. It's nice and secure. If someone wants to steal something, they're gonna steal it. But to the, like I said, to the average Joe Blow, this would just, look like an awning so no one's going to take any notice of it but inside look at that oh look, <laughs> look, look at that guys he stores his fishing gear in there i don't know about you but guys when i go fishing it's on a rare occasion now and i put my fishing gear in the back of the vehicle 
it always seems to tangle up with everything else and it's a hassle to get it out the hook king on this the liner there'd be a mess etc and i don't know about steve people bobby would have went through the same thing as i did so look at this you can store all your fishing gear in here how cool is that and inside it's got this is an optional extra he's got with it but it's got a um fold out bag in here and you can put all your soft fishing gear in there you can put bait in there whatever you might want to take fishing with you you can fold it up it's made of a water sort of resistant or something that you can wash out it's like a see-through plastic put it under your arm grab your fishing rod and also in there you do get it with the gear you don't get the tackle or anything in it but it gives you two plastic boxes for all your sinks hookers awesome whatever two of those in there so Fun. you can throw that in there as well take it all down to the it's got everything in there oh excellent the dam just down there. <laughs> we should go fishing, Phil. Yeah. Hey, Buck, you might get a fish before you do, eh? <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot to show in this vehicle. That's why I was pretty keen on showing you a bit of a tour around Stephen's FJ here. And I don't know about you, but I think it's an awesome setup. So thank you very much, Stephen. No worries, mate. I, I really appreciate that. This is the first of this type of video that I filmed. I don't know if I'll do too many like this, but if anyone out there want me to run over their vehicle and do a review and are living in the area or passing through, just let me know. I'll be more than happy to, to go over and uh, do a video review on your vehicle or setup, camper trailer, anything you like like so. So check out Stephen's YouTube channel. So it is... FJ Camping and Touring. FJ Camping and Touring. So guys, well, thank you. Thank you to those who watched right through and to the end. Thank you very much. I know it's a long video, but I think this one's worth it. And I reckon it's an awesome setup that Steve's got here. So check out his YouTube channel and please subscribe. And till next time, guys, we're gonna go and have a couple of drinks. You we're gonna... camping down here at a place called Damn Crazy. So we're going to go and cook up a meal in my little air roaster, 240 volt air roaster. And I don't know what we're going to cook yet, but I'll have a look and see what I've got in my freezer. And we're going to get a couple of drinks out and we're going to sit down overlooking this awesome dam here and probably go for a bit of a walk later. So it's a great location in between Biggerton and Childers. It's a place called Dam Crazy Camping. Lovely owners, very peaceful. The wildlife is quite amazing, the birds, and very clear skies. I've taken some awesome night photos the other night. So guys, thanks for watching, thanks for supporting our channels. It's great to, I mean, we're having a ball here, we're, we enjoy doing stuff like this. It's gone well past lunchtime, it's 12.30 now and we haven't even started cooking yet. So, my little air roaster, 20 minutes, food will be ready. <laughs> it's the beauty of that. <laughs> That's the only problem with the travel buddy. So if we're going to cook in the travel buddy, we'll probably have to wait for quite a while. But that little air roaster i got on there, you know, it's, that works the treat. So guys, till next time, look after yourself, take care, eh? And cheers. Any questions, ask along. See you. Cheers.